Good day all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condem condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone that doth evil heath the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that doth truth come to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are worth in God in Jesus name we pray Amen this is the word of God from John chapter 3 verse 16 to verse 21 and the English version of the national prayer of the Republic of South Africa is as follows Lord bless Africa may her glory be lifted high hear our prayers Lord bless us, your children. Lord, we ask you to protect our nation, intervene and end all conflicts. Protect us, protect our nation, protect South Africa from the blue of our skies, from the depths of our seas, over our everlasting mountains where the echoing cracks resound sound the call to come together and united we shall stand let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home and without any further ado I will let the Honorable Archbishop Tutu take over prayer. Thank you, God, our Father, that by the death and resurrection of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you have overcome sin and death and evil, injustice and oppression, hatred, separation and alienation. On dank ye that ye on stod desfer, and the geschiedenis van ons prachtige land geleid het. Before our very eyes we see a miracle unfolding and our dreams becoming reality as the sun shines on a new dawn for us all, black and white together. Destroy. Thank you God for freeing our country from racism and oppression and for liberating all our people. Thank you for the courage of those who initiated change. Thank you for bringing those who were previously enemies around the same table to achieve a negotiated settlement. Thank you 
for the miraculous way in which you transformed the election into a corporate act of nation building. Thank you, God, for all those here and overseas who have supported us with their prayers and love. Thank you, God, that you have chosen this, your servant, to be the first president of a democratic South Africa where all of us, black and white together, will count, not because of irrelevancies such as race, gender, status, or skin color, but because of our intrinsic worth as those created in your image, as redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus, as being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Bless our president with wisdom, good health, and all the gifts necessary for this high calling. Bless his colleagues, the executive deputy presidents and members of the government of national unity. Bless this beautiful land with its wonderful people of different races, cultures, and languages, so that it will be a land of laughter and joy, of justice and reconciliation, of peace and unity, of compassion, caring, and sharing. We pray this prayer for a true patriotism in the powerful name of Jesus who died and rose again and reigns with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please say after me, God bless South Africa. God bless South God Africa. Her children. Guide her Guide children. Her leaders. Guide her leaders. And give her peace. And for give Jesus her peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Marukine is your name on Dozenu, Ebumazin in a second Tandi, no Tito, no Yanawaku Yasu Christi Cosietu, it in Sigale Rogatito, so Manda, we say Unyana no more in Mele, Ibenani, Salenani, Gonapagate, Amen. Amen. And so we agree with the Bishop, and so it must be. That is the meaning of Amen. And having regard of what today is, I will let him do the talking. Today all us do by our presence here and by our celebrations in other parts of our country and the world, confer glory and hope to newborn liberty. Out of the experience of an extraordinary human disaster that lasted too long, must be born a society of which all humanity will be proud. Our daily deeds as ordinary South Africans must produce an actual South African reality that will reinforce humanity's belief in justice. That will reinforce humanity's belief in justice. And so it is true. Humanity's belief in justice is reinforced. And I do not stand alone in this regard. I stand with those who understand what justice is and what humanity's belief is in common school of thought. Trade and economic growth. The strive to level the playing field so that it's not artificially tipped in favor of any one country at the expense of others. And every nation has the right and opportunity to compete fairly. We will strive to ensure that basic labor rights, environmental safeguards, and intellectual property are protected. Basic labor rights. Basic labor rights are protected. and let it be so in the name of Jesus. And that the benefits of globalization are shared broadly throughout all our societies. We'll continue to uphold the long-standing rules and norms that have formed the guardrails of international engagement for decades. 
that have been essential to the development of nations around the world. It is those international engagements that I seek. It is those international engagements that I call the Honorable President of the United States, Joe Biden, to come and help South Africa with. The reality of this matter is as urgent as you see this particular video. Bedrock commitments like freedom of navigation, adherence to international laws and treaties, support for arms control measures that reduce the, rest, the risk and enhance transparency. Our approach is firmly grounded and fully consistent with the United Nations mission and the values we've agreed to. The values we've agreed to in the United of Nations mission. It is important for all to know those particular obligations imposed that we as South Africans are the member states to it. When we drafted this charter, these are commitments we all made and that we're all bound to uphold. That we are all bound to uphold. And it is true that it is all of us, all of us, who are bound to uphold these particular... And as we strive to deal with these urgent challenges, whether they're long-standing or newly emerging, we must also deal with one another. All the major powers... We must also deal with one another. We must also deal with one another. I must deal with the incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa as a person. I must deal with President Joe, Joe Biden as a person. And they must deal with me as a person. President of the United States of America, I call upon you to fulfill these terms you have shared with us of the world have a duty, in my view, to carefully manage their relationships so we do not tip from responsible competition to conflict. The United States will compete and will compete vigorously and lead with our values and our strength. We'll stand up for our allies and our friends and oppose attempts by stronger countries to dominate weaker ones, whether through changes to territory by force economic coercion, technical exploitation, or disinformation. <clears throat> but we're not seeking, say it again, we are not seeking a new Cold War or a world divided into rigid blocks. The United States is ready to work with any nation. United States is ready to work with any nation, including South Africa. And South Africa is calling upon United States urgently to intervene in a matter between the sixth president of the republic and the fifth president of the republic. For it is true and correct that the constitution is the supreme law of the republic. Law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid and the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. Section 4 in the Constitution imposes an obligation that the President may change, may declare the national anthem by proclamation. And it is correct that the national anthem must change its terms that subject us all to live and struggle, attempt or try for freedom in South Africa, our land. As the sixth president, I call upon the United States of America to referee in this matter where I urge all people and lead all people 
to enjoy free to live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home it is correct that i am asking you in this, this video up and pursues peaceful resolution to shared challenges even if we have intense disagreements in other areas because we'll all suffer the consequences of our failure if we do not come together to address the urgent threats like COVID-19 and climate change or enduring threats like nuclear proliferation. And it is correct that we have the responsibility to one another. It is therefore true that I have yesterday on 4 October 2021 sent an email to the office of the president of the united states including his amb ambassadors in the republic and our ambassadors in the united states of america including all other uh, public broadcasters or television stations that were included in the email that have received the letter to the president of the United States and the letter to the President of the United States is as follows this is the letter that was dispatched yesterday to the President of the United States of America the White House in which national security of the Republic of South Africa is the subject and it reads, I am a man of God and security and defense of the Republic of South Africa and her people. President Joseph Robinette Biden, the Battle of Midway turned the tide of the war in the Pacific. The sea remembers its own. Human rights mean nothing if not implemented or applied at all times. And the Constitution Act 108 of 1996 is the supreme law of the Republic of South Africa. Law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid to the extent of its inconsist invalidity. And the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. Section 4 of the Constitution imposes an obligation that national, the national anthem of the Republic is determined by the President by proclamation. And the incumbent fifth President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force, Mr. Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa, and his administration refuses to free my country and its people from slavery to live and struggle strive or attempt for freedom in South Africa, our land. While the incumbent 6th President Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele fulfills the obligations imposed in terms of Section 13 of the Constitution which provides that no one may be subjected to slavery, servitude or forced labor and free all to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. As father to Nyiko Mangolele and Aluta Songelwa, I vehemently refuse to allow my children or any other child and their children's children to say to God that they want to live and struggle, strive or attempt for freedom in South Africa, our land. As only a slave lives and struggles, strive or attempts for freedom in their land. The Bill of Rights is a cornerstone of democracy in South Africa. It enshrines the rights of all people in our country and affirms the democratic values of human dignity, equality and freedom. The state must respect, protect, promote and fulfill the rights in the Bill of Rights which are subjected to the limitation only in, the te in terms of general application to the extent that the limitation is reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society based on human dignity, equality and freedom, taking into account all relevant factors, including the nature of the right, 
the importance of the of the purpose of the limitation the nature and extent of the limitation the relation between the limitation and its purpose and less restrictive means to achieve the purpose except as provided in what i have said or in any other provision of the constitution no law may limit any right entrenched in the bill of rights as contemplated in section 7 of the constitution the president of the united nations general assembly 76th session abdullah shahid secretary general mr antonio gautares Excellencies, heads of state and government, colleagues, friends and family. For the first time, the father of our rainbow nation, President Nelson Holisa Samadiba Mandela, on 10 May 1994, said that our daily deeds as ordinary South African must produce an actual South African reality that will reinforce humanity's belief in justice, strengthen its confidence in the nobility. I humbly submit that the opposite is achieved by the incumbent fifth president Cyril Ramaphosa and or his administration in relation to Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Wolane Mangolele, who at a place of new beginnings in Polsmo on 24 February 2021 took over as the sixth president of the Republic of South Africa in terms of a sworn statement attached in the document sent to you marked as VMM1 and ignored with impunity by persons owing allegiance to the Republic of South Africa unlawfully engaged in conduct within or outside the republic so as to support crimes against the state and the administration of justice in feathering aiding or abetting criminal activity apartheid misconduct or corruption with the intention of unlawfully impairing violating threatening or endangering the existence independence or security of the republic with the intention of unlawfully changing the constitutional structure of the republic unlawfully overthrowing the government of the republic or unlawfully coercing by violence the government of the republic into any action or into refraining from any action building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19 rebuild sustainability sustainably respond to the needs of the planet respect the rights of the people and revitalize the United Nation was the theme at which speaking for the first time on 21st September 2021 at the United Nations General Assembly 76th session President Joe Biden of the United States amongst other things said that corruption fuels inequality siphons off a nation's resources spreads across broad borders and generates human suffering it is nothing less than a national security threat in the 21st century around the world we are increasingly increasingly seeing citizens demonstrate their discontent seeing the wealthy and well connected grow richer and richer taking payoffs and bribes operating above the law while the vast majority of the people struggle to find a job or put food on the table or to get their business off the ground or simply send their children to school people have taken to the streets in every region to demand that their governments address people's basic needs give everyone a fair shot to succeed and protect their god given rights 
And in that chorus of voices across languages and continents, we hear a common cry, a cry for dignity, simple dignity. As leaders, it is our duty to answer that call, not to silence it. The United States is committed to using our resources and our international platform to support these voices. Listen to them. Partner with them to find ways to respond that advance human dignity around the world. For example, there is an enormous need for infrastructure in developing countries but infrastructure that is low quality or that feeds corruption or exacerbates environmental degradation may only end up contributing to greater challenges for countries over time. Done the right way, however, with transparent, sustainable investment in projects that respond to the country's needs and engage their local workers to maintain high labor and environmental standards. Infrastructure can be a strong foundation that allows societies in low and middle income countries to grow and to prosper. That's the idea behind Build Back Better world. For far too long South African democracy has been delayed as I cried for dignity and my right to life which is entirely protected in terms of the table of non-derogable rights in the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa Act 108 of 1996. And I call for President Joe Biden as a leader to answer a call to urgently mediate between the sixth and the fifth president of the republic of south africa as the legislature national executive judiciary and other organs of state fail to comprehend that a commander's first responsibility is to the well-being of his men it is indeed correct that to deliver for our own people, we must also engage deeply with the rest of the world to ensure that our own future, we must work together with other partners towards a shared future. And that is why the sixth president declared by proclamation for all people to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, while the fifth president continues to subject all people to live and struggle, strive, attempt or try for freedom in South Africa, our land. It is right that our security, our prosperity and our very freedoms are interconnected. In my view, as never before, and so I believe we must work together as never before. The preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognizes the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family as the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. Whereas the United Nations have in the Charter reaffirmed their faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person and in the equal right of men and women, and have determined to promote social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom, and whereas member states have pledged themselves to achieve, in cooperation with the United Nations, the promotion of the universal respect and observance of human rights and fundamental freedom. Whereas a common understanding of these rights and freedoms is the greatest importance for the full realization of this pledge. Now, therefore, the General Assembly proclaims this universal declaration of human rights as a common standard of, the achi of achievement of all people and all nations to the end that every individual and every organ of society keeping this 
declaration constantly in mind shall strive by the teaching and education to promote the respect for these rights and freedoms and by progressive measures national and international to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance both among the people of member states themselves and among the people of territories under their jurisdiction. And I have continued to write in this declaration that Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides that everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law while the constitution of the republic of south africa at section 9 1 imposes an obligation that everyone is equal before the law and has the right to equal protection and benefit of the law and at section 20 the bill of rights con constitutionally guarantees that no citizen may be deprived of citizenship therefore the notion that the incumbent fifth president mr Cyril ramaphosa and his administration that sylvester volani madala mangolele is persona non grata in the republic of south africa and must not be served and defended in accordance with the constitution and the law as the people of the country governed by the african national congress must come to an end i Double nine double zero four zero four six MC President Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volani Madala Mangolele as Security Service Act in terms of Section one nine nine five of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and conjure customary international law and international agreements binding on the Republic to humbly and dutifully call upon the president Joe Bin Biden to affirm and uphold the human dignity and human rights under which nations in common cause more than seven decades ago formed the institution he addressed at the United Nations headquarters in New York on 21 20, September 2021 and arbitrate or referee in the proceedings before the Defense Force Service Commission in a matter between the sixth and the fifth president of the Republic of South Africa a matter to be had virtually at any time the leader of the United States of America can summon the fool the will and resolve to seize the opportunity that lies in the urgent and looming crisis challenging our collective future to live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home simply put the fundamental dispute to be resolved by the application of law decided in a fair public hearing is that the incumbent fifth president, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, is subjecting all to live and struggle, strive, attempt or try for freedom in South Africa, our land, and has deserted his duties as commander-in-chief, head of state and head of the national executive to uphold, defend and respect the constitution as the supreme law of the republic and promote the unity of the nation and that which will advance the republic of south africa and its people while the sixth president lieutenant commander sylvester volani madala mangolele as a peace officer or justice of peace subjects all to live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home and is in service and defense of the country and its people in accordance with the constitution and the law and with honor dignity courage and integrity peace and security human rights and development 
are the three main pillars of the work of the United Nations system during the general debate in which heads of the delegations are expected to state the position of their governments on topical issues that the United Nations is seized with. I demand peace and security, human rights and development of the Republic of South Africa as a nation equal in the family of nation and request a help from President Joe Biden and his administration toward a more peaceful, prosperous future for all people. I agree with the President of the United States that there is a fundamental truth of the 21st century within each of our own countries and as a global community that our suc own success is bound up in others succeeding as well. The following principle govern national security in the Republic of South Africa. National security must reflect the resolve of South Africans as individuals and as a nation to live as equals to live in peace and harmony, to be free from fear and want, and to seek a better life. The resolve to live in peace and harmony precludes any South African citizen from participating in armed conflict, nationally or internationally, except as provided for in terms of the constitution or national legislation. National security must be pursued in compliance with the law, including international law. National security is subject to the authority of parliament and the national executive. And the sad reality is that the sixth president ignores this particular truth. And I meant to say right now in that particular document that the sad reality is the fifth president. Please accept my humble apology and in accordance with the rules amend the six to read five in the document sent to you at page eight of thirteen titled the number one letter to the President of the United States of America. And as I set the terms forward, it is in this same content, President Joe Biden, that I humbly employ the Constitutional Court of the Republic of South Africa and directing Acting Chief Justice Zondo to in terms of the preamble of our supreme law recognize the injustices of my past by enrolling case number CCT 12 of 2020 in terms of rule 12 of the constitutional court rules. In the case of the legislature, in terms of rule 130 of the national assembly rules, or in the case of a high court, in terms of Rule 612A of the Uniform Rules of Court. For a review on the grounds contemplated in Section 241 of the Supreme Court's Act Number 59 of 1959, which explicitly sets forth that the grounds upon which the proceedings of any inferior court may be brought under review before a provincial or local division are absence of jurisdiction on the part of the court, interest in the cause, bias, malice, or corruption on the part of the presiding judicial officer, gross irregularity in the proceedings, and the admission of inadmissible or incompetent evidence or the rejection of admissible or competent evidence. The bottom line is that case number CCT 12 of 2020 must be heard in a fair trial and in order to qualify the grounds supra one must consider the following. Absence of jurisdiction on the part of the court 
manner of arriving at decision by the constitutional court at section 123 of the superior courts act number 10 of 2013 is grossly violated by the quorum to allow the incumbent chief justice to preside on a matter he is called to defend and antithetical to the statutory provisions that no judge may sit at the hearing of an appeal against a judgment or order given in a case which was heard before him or her. Further, the parties on the court order are inconsistent with the parties on the application thus misleading all people to believe that 15 defendants in the application means 14 respondents in the court order interest in the cause bias malice or corruption on the part of presiding judicial officers the aggravating reality of sylvester volani madala mangolele being forced to believe and live a life as if he is indeed convicted to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years in terms of section 105 of the defense act has unlawfully and intentionally misrepresented on the dod personal system since 8 august 2018 while the reality is that no formal charges of offensive behavior were ever prosecuted before any court or independent tribunal or forum as guaranteed in the bill of rights at section 34 of the constitution that the current aggravating reality of sylvester volane mangolele being forced to believe and live as if he was had or granted an opportunity of being had on 14 september 2018 before the honorable davis j of the high court of south africa western cape division in cape town unlawfully and intentionally made a misrepresentation which causes actual or potential prejudice in terms of section 21b of the vexatious proceedings act gross irregularity in the proceedings the constitutional court did not resolve dispute by making findings of fact and applying the appropriate law in a fair hearing which includes the duty to observe the letter and spirit of the Audi Alterambatem rule as no notice of intention to defend was filed by any party. Remain manifestly impartial and did not give adequate reason for any decision. There's a gross violation of the code of judicial conduct the constitution or the law the admission of inadmissible or incompetent evidence or rejection of admissible or competent evidence the legislature the national executive the judiciary and all organs of state are constantly forced to believe that Sylvester Volani Madala Mangolele is in jail for five years since 8 August 2018 and that he has no reasonable ground to institute any legal proceedings because he was heard or granted an opportunity of being heard on 14 September 2018 in Cape Town by the Honorable Davis J. All efforts are engaged upon to force all people to believe lies as true simply because such lies are from a few in critical capabilities such as the incumbent fifth president Cyril Ramaphosa as commander-in-chief of the defense force. And it is trite that in terms of section 13.1 of the Defense Act 42 of 2002, the president appoints the chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Solishoke, then and now General Rozane Mapwanya, who along with Vice Admiral Samuel Songwani and others are doing everything in their power to sustain criminal activity, corruption, apartheid or misconduct as unlawfully and intentionally misrepresented in the DOD personal system. 
a fundamental administrative problem which takes a few minutes to fix in order for the salary of force number double nine double zero four zero four six mc to be paid into his bank account all judicial officers i have stood before have failed to resolve this simple dispute and i trust that the united states of america will not fail as i do not fail in service and defense of my country and its people in accordance with the constitution and the law and with honor, dignity, courage, and integrity. People are forced to believe that it is wrong to report criminal activity, corruption, or misconduct to the relevant authority as obligated by the Code of Conduct for Uniform Members of the South African National Defense Force, which equally binds the incumbent fifth president Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa as the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Force whose primary command responsibility is to take care of his men. Let us all pass begin and comprehend the fundamental principle contemplated in terms of Section 2A of the Defense Act that in exercising any power or performing any duty in terms of the Defense Act I must have regard to the principles that the formulation and execution of defense policy is subject to the authority of Parliament and the National Executive. And I am obligated by an Act of Parliament to, in terms of Milestone 1 of the South African Defense Review 2014, arrest the deadline in critical capabilities through immediate directed intervention. I put it to all people that the incumbent president, Mr. Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa, is a deadline in critical capabilities that must be arrested through immediate directed interventions and removed uh, from office on the grounds of serious, a serious violation of the constitution or the law, serious misconduct or inability to perform the functions of office. The Secretary to the National Assembly, Mr. Masibulele Klaso, simply refuses to perform his constitutional obligations diligently and without delay as obligated in terms of Section 237 of the Constitution and open the doors of the legislature to fulfill the obligations imposed in terms of Section 89 of the Constitution. It is here and now I ask that you desist from refusing to open the doors of Parliament, Mr. Masibulele Klaso. You are the Secretary of Parliament. You are the Secretary to the National Assembly. You must, in terms of Rule 33 of the National Assembly Rules, act according to the rules. The relief sought is a mandament funds poly remedy in terms of section 172 of the constitution. The secretary to the National Assembly, Mr. Klasomas, in terms of section 44.4 read with section 34 of the constitution, open the doors of parliament for all to live and enjoy freedom in the universe of our home. The deputy judge president of the High Court of South Africa Western Cape Division, Cape Town, the Honorable Madame Goliath J. must in terms of section 165 read with section 34 of the Constitution open the doors of the judiciary in terms of case number 19275 of 2020. For all to live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home. The state must respect, protect, promote and fulfill the rights in the Bill of Rights and make immediate payment of my salary. The simplicity of this matter resides on any person having to answer a simple question. Is Sylvester Volani Madala Mangolele in jail since 8 August 2018 or not? Mr. President of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden, I am an African. Because of that, 
I am also able to state this self-evident truth that I am born of a people who are heroes and heroines. I am born of the people who would not tolerate oppression. I am of a nation that would not allow that fear of death, torture, imprisonment, exile, or persecution should result in the perpetuation of injustice. The great masses who are our mother and father will not permit that the behavior of the few result in the description of our country and its people as barbaric. Let there be peace and justice for all. Yours faithfully in the spirit of Ubuntu and the principles of Patupili. Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele, the sixth president of the Republic of South Africa, Lieutenant Commander Papa Ote. This is the sworn statement that I have made while in custody. You need to take into account the reality that. I am on duty 24-7. I am a father 24-7. I cannot hide from the name of the Lord 24-7. When the Lord calls and say, Adam, where are you? I answered the call of the Lord. And I did that. in defense and protection of the constitution or the law against all enemies foreign and domestic where i double nine double zero four zero four six mc lieutenant commander sylvester volani mangolele to take over as president of the republic of south africa pending the dissolution of the sixth parliament before expiry of its term in as obligated by the provisions of section 50 of the constitution in terms of section 4 of the constitution i declare by proclamation the replacement of the terms let us live and strive for freedom in south africa our land with the terms let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe our home the universal declaration of human rights and the supremacy of the constitution and the rule of law prohibits any form or kind of slavery and it is only a slave who lives and strive and struggle or attempt for freedom in their land the bill of rights is a cornerstone of democracy in the republic of south africa and Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele is simply fulfilling the obligations imposed in terms of the provisions of Section 13 of the Constitution. And in any event, Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Mangolele does not obey a manifestly illegal order as obligated in terms of section 1996 of the constitution read with section 2e of the defense act and the code of conduct for uniform members of the south african national defense force defender and protector of the republic papa Oteng. this is a 13 page document that is sent to you, President Joe Biden, for consideration. And I did this as a leader of a country and its people that requires to enjoy freedom in the universe, our home, as a nation equal before the family of nations. And in doing so, I have also sent the letter to the office of the incumbent president Cyril Ramaphosa 
which includes the Defense Force Service Commission and that such a letter has been in view of the letter to you, President Joe Biden. And that letter reads as follows. Request for proceedings before the Defense Force Service Commission. Double nine double zero four zero four six MC President Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele. An evenly numbered letter to the President of the United States of America, President Joe Biden, has reference. Excuse me. <clears throat> While we wait for the President of the United States, kindly in terms of Section 1951E of the Constitution and respond to my needs as the people who has been arbitrarily or without just cause deprived of his salary since 8 August 2018 and pay my salary and all benefits. <coughs> Advocate my daughter Titus and the Office of the State Attorney are available to come to court at any time as obligated in terms of Section 91 of the Superior Courts Act but the court does not want to fulfill the obligations imposed by the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law as a founding value of the Republic. It is for the first time in my life I witness a court compromising its core values, independence, impartiality, dignity, accessibility, and effectiveness of the courts just so that criminal activity Corruption, apartheid, or misconduct is supported and upheld to be above the law. Peace, security, and the rule of law continue to be the basis of meaningful development of any society and the Defense Force Service Commission is called to uphold the following terms. Whereas the Defense Force is a national asset which is mandated under the Constitution to be structured and managed as a disciplined military force and in accordance with the principles of international law governing the use of force is what the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans has under Section 62L of the Defense Act made the regulation in the schedule and what I read to you is the preamble of the schedule of the Defense Act of number 42 of 2002, whose guardian is the Defense Force Service Commission. And whereas the Defense Force is essential in the defense of the Constitution, the territorial integrity and national sovereignty of the Republic and our democracy, and whereas the Defense Force provides a soldiering career wherein members entrust their inalienable right to life, which is guaranteed in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution to the nation and the state, and whereas it is an unavoidable reality that when a soldier is recruited, he and his family becomes a part of the larger Defense Force family as an institution to share in the joys, anxieties, and the sometimes unfortunate outcome of service, including maiming and death. And whereas it is essential for an effective mechanism to be created to provide for the necessary duty of care to the soldier and his or her family, and whereas it is therefore necessary to create a working environment for the soldiering professionals that is pos positively conducive to discipline. And whereas these factors define the uniqueness of the soldiering profession. And whereas, in line with the uniqueness of the soldiering profession, the Defense Force Commission 
has been duly established in terms of Section 62A1 of the Defence Act as a statutory body. And whereas the Defence Force Service Commission's role will be to provide comprehensive system of ongoing research, continuous review, investigation and benchmarking on world-class best practices in order to provide informed advice to the minister and on all aspects of service conditions for members of the Defence Force to enable the establishment and maintenance of sustainable condition of high morale and, a st and state of combat readiness for the Defence Force and whereas the fundamental principle that will guide the Defence Force Service Commission in execution of its mandate will be objectivity, integrity, impartiality and transparency in conducting its business without bias, fear or prejudice. And whereas it is necessary to protect the dignity of the Commission in the execution of its functions. And whereas it is necessary to create procedures, structures and mechanisms whereby the Commission is empowered to fulfill its mandate having regard to, be, to the mission, vision and values of the Commission. The incumbent fifth president of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, is in terms of section 83, read with section 201, 2021 of the Constitution, Act 108 of 1996, called to fulfill the statutory obligation imposed at section 2 of the Public Finance Management Act, whose object is to, to secure transparency, accountability, and sound management of the revenue expenditure, assets and liabilities of force number 9900 MC. And it is, it is tried that the state has a duty to promote awareness of the prohibition against torture aimed at the prevention and combating of torture as obligated in terms of section 91 of the Prevention of Combating and Torture of Persons Act and the constitutional obligation to respect, protect, promote, and fulfill the rights in the Bill of Rights diligently and without delay. When one reads Section 72 of the Constitution with Section 237 of the Constitution. Fellow South Africans, what you see here is true. And all members of family of nations, what you see here is true. It is correct that the reality of the person defined by this first number does not qualify the statutory obligations imposed in terms of section 105 of the Defense Act of 2002 as unlawfully and intentionally misrepresented on the DOD PESOL system as he is not convicted to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years since 8 August 2018 for him to be arbitrarily or without just cause deprived payment of salary for the past 37 months with impunity by the head of state, head of the national executive and commander in chief of the defense force who must at all times 24-7 uphold, defend and respect the Constitution as the supreme law of the Republic and promote the unity of the nation and that which will advance the Republic. This impunity is unlawfully and intentionally sustained by the legislature, the judiciary and other organs of state which fails to fulfill an imposed constitutional obligation at section 34 in the Bill of Rights that everyone has the right to have any dispute that can be resolved by the application of law decided before 
decided in a fair public hearing before a court or where appropriate another independent and impartial tribunal or forum. Thus, gustabbing the Republic of South Africa to support criminal activity, corruption, apartheid, or misconduct, and forcing all people to believe that Sylvester Volani Madala Mangolele was heard or granted an opportunity of being heard by Davis J of the High Court of South Africa Western Cape Division Cape Town on 14 September. While the reality is that Sylvester Volani Madala Mangolele was never heard or granted an opportunity of being heard in order to qualify the statutory obligations imposed in terms of Section 21B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act number 3 of 1956. In service and defense of my country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law, I requested the Defense Force Service Commission to serve impartially and exercise his or her powers or perform his or her duties in good faith and without fear, favor, or prejudice to by notice in writing under the hand of the chairperson of the commission call the sixth and the fifth incumbent president of the Republic of South Africa and commander-in-chief of the Defense Force, including the arbiter or referee, president and commander-in-chief of the United States of America to urgently appear before it at a time and place specified in the notice and to produce before the commission articles or documents in the position or custody or under the control of the incumbent fifth president mr matamela cyril ramaphosa which may be necessary in connection with the inquiry section 104 15 of the defense act provides that any member or employee of the defense of the department who willful who in willful or negligent manner contravenes or fail to comply with any regulation made under this act is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding one year The incumbent fifth president, Cyril Ramaphosa, in his administration refused to adhere to regulation provided for in the preamble of the Defense Force Service Commission that the inalienable right to life of the sixth president, Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele, which is guaranteed in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, is entrusted to the nation and the state. And that it is indeed an unavoidable reality that the family, especially children, of force number double nine double zero four zero four six MC is part of the larger Defence Force family as an institution to share in the joys, anxieties, and the sometimes unfortunate outcomes of service, including maiming and death. I am 37 months without payment of my salary and have suffered damage or loss as a result of an act or omission arising from any training or service under the Defense Act which resulted to an unlawful and intentional misrepresentation on the DOD PESOL system misleading all to believe that I am convicted to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years as contemplated in Section 105 of the Defense Act as the reason for my alleged discharge. What had happened is that General Solishoke, Vice Admiral Samuel Songwane and others took the law into their own hands and resorted to self-help instead of using due legal procedure. And all that has been achieved to this day by all organs of state of the Republic of South Africa is sustenance of criminal activity, corruption, 
apartheid and misconduct in the South African National Defense Force in fear or favor by the misconduct of Chief South African National Defense Force on 8 August 2018. To sustain the same criminal activity, corruption, apartheid and misconduct, General Rosani Mapuanya is not functioning as obligated in terms of Section 14 of the Defense Act to manage the Defense Force as a disciplined military force or train members of the Defense Force to act in accordance with the Constitution and the law, including customary and international law ag and international agreements binding on the Republic. Now, I am in severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, is intentionally inflicted on me for such purposes to obtain my signature for pension in support of criminal activity, corruption, apartheid or misconduct, or a confession that I agree that I am imprisoned to a period not exceeding five years and punished for an act committed by General Solishoke, Vice Admiral Samuel Songwani and others who intimidate or coerce me to do or to refrain from doing anything. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> A reality in which the incumbent fifth president, Mr. Matame Lasserel Ramaphosa, commits torture, attempts to commit torture, or incites, instigates, commands, or procures any person to commit torture, and causes parliament, the judiciary, the national executive, and organs of state to participate in torture, or conspire with public officials to aid or procure the commission of or to commit torture against Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele as a natural person who suffers irreparable harm and indignity. Remembering the obligations imposed in terms of Section 4 of the Prevention of Combating and Torture of Persons Act number 13 of 2013, And that no one shall be punished for disobeying an order to commit torture. The Defense Force Service Commission must give effect to the Republic's obligation in terms of the United Nations Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment or punishment. To provide for the offense of torture for Force Number 9904046 MC and other offenses associated with the torture of this particular force number and to prevent and combat the torture of persons within or across the borders of the republic and to provide for other matters connected therewith since article 5 of the universal declaration of human rights declares that no one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. And section 12 1D and E of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa provides that everyone has the right to freedom and security of the person which includes the right not to be tortured in any way and not to be treated or punished in a cruel, inhumane or degrading way. It is correct that any person, including the incumbent fifth president, Mr. Matame Lasserel Ramaphosa, who is liable to render service in the Defense Force by virtue of military service within the Defense Force and refuses to render such service, is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding one year as obligated in terms of section 104 of the defense 10412 of the defense act 
and that any person who is subject to this act deserts from the defense force is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction if he or she committed the offense while on service to imprisonment for a period not exceeding 20 years and in any other case to imprisonment for a period not exceeding 10 years as contemplated in terms of section 13 of schedule 1 disciplinary and other military offenses. Lieutenant Commander Mangolele did not desert his duties in any event. And it is true that we are all obligated to follow regulations. As a regulation 3 of the Defense Force Service Commission obligates a commissioner to serve impartially and exercise his or her powers to perform his or her duties in good faith and without fear, favor, bias or prejudice where a member or employee may not interfere with, hinder or obstruct the commission in the performance of its function and in executing its mandate the Commission must at all times seek to maintain a healthy relationship with the Defense Force Military Command in such a way that it enhances the environment of command and control. All I ask is for my name, is truth on my name. What shall be achieved at the conclusion of this matter is the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. Only professional conduct or competence shall achieve the amicable conclusion of this matter. Personalities shall only sustain criminal activity, corruption, apartheid or misconduct as it has been in the past 37 months without payment of my salary. Since 13 January 2003 to date, I have been on duty in service and defense of my country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law. Without fail and with honor, dignity, courage and integrity. I am obstructed in the execu execution of my duties in terms of the Constitution and the law by a few in critical capabilities of state. Myself and or any person in the defense force is obligated in terms of section 1995 of the constitution to act in accordance with the constitution and the law including customary international law and international agreements binding on the republic when it comes to the to law the defense act imposes an obligation in terms of section 10 of the defense act that any person who obstructs or interferes with the defense force in the execution of its duties in terms of this act or the constitution is guilty of an offense and liable on conviction to a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding 25 years. I am apolitical and commissioned by the President in terms of Section 54 of the Co Defense Act. That simply means that I must, on behalf of the President and as a Lieutenant Commander, uphold, defend, and respect the Constitution as the supreme law of the Republic and promote the unity of the nation and that which will ad shall advance the Republic on behalf of any person freely elected as president of South Africa. I cannot derogate from the constitutionally imposed obligation since I am required to act in accordance with the constitution and the law. I am mandated by an act of parliament to arrest the deadline in critical capabilities through immediate directed interventions. I am alive 
a person equal before the law as you are. Otherwise, you would not be hearing or reading this particular letter to professionally resolve a dispute by the application of law and ensure that the misrepresentation on the DOD PESOL system unlawfully and intentionally made on 8 August 2018 is removed and my salary and all benefits are paid. Availability of evidence is attached here to marked SVM1 is information on the DOD PESOL system and in addition attached here to marked SVM2 is what section 105 of the defense act says and if i may quickly go to that particular section or part and show you quickly so that we can go on in agreement this is what has been recorded as the reason for my discharge OB, which means offensive behavior, this part. And section 105, it's a Defense Act section 105. And when you go to Defense Act of 2002, you look at section 105, you read it in its entirety, and then you are more than welcome to pause the video after reading it, after this particular broadcast, and then you will find that him on liable on conviction to imprisonment where one is required to be an accused before passing the sentence as a issue that must be taken into account and given regard of this particular thing, that is the evidence that must be taken into account for my salary to be paid I say again, the evidence for my salary to be paid to be taken into account is that at any given time, even when you can go now, the DOD PESOL system is indicating to everyone in the world uh, that the re application reason is offensive behavior. And when you find that, what is this offensive behavior? It means that I'm convicted imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years this is the only thing that must change for my salary to be paid and my salary must be paid and in paying my salary one has to consider policy one has to consider statute one has to consider the time that it has taken for this particular matter to happen it is these particular realities in which one did what had to be done in order for things to be where they are in this particular day and age. And in that regard, Attached here to marked as VM3 is what must be processed in accordance with the Constitution and the law. SVM3 is what must be processed. This particular sworn statement is the sworn statement that must be processed. And in, in processing this particular sworn statement, everything will come to light as and when it had happened to this day. All other documentation in the library The thing that needs to be processed is this. This one statement must be processed. This piece of paper has got significant value to the freedom of the people of our country for generations to come. It cannot be stopped by evil doers antithetical to the Constitution and the rule of law. All other documentation in the library of the state attorney, parliament, judiciary, 
and any other organ of state must be produced in support of the aggravating reality that has been perpetuated with impunity since 20 June 2018, causing a reality attached here to marked SVM4. The fundamental reality that must be solved is this. This is an act making this my lawful constitutional address. And to put it simple, I have lost all these particular issues as a result of de deprivation of my salary and I want all of them back. The car keys of this particular vehicle are in terms of section 2012A of the constitution in position of the incumbent fifth president, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa. And instead of processing this particular reality, people refuse and make it as if this is not the case number, this is not the stamp, this is not an official document, this is not the, the signature, this is not the date, just that this just did not happen. They refuse to understand that on 2021st July, it has been made lawful that I am king of the universe and my name is Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volane Madala Sly Mangolele Papa Ote. In service and defense of my country and its people in accordance with the constitution and the law and with honor, dignity, courage and integrity, I serve in the South African National Defense Force with loyalty and pride as a citizen and a volunteer, a defender and protector of the Republic of South Africa. This is true and was authenticated by a police official who knows that I am a peace officer buried alive and I want everything that was taken from me. And my Facebook profile is that it is true that I'm a very simple but frank guy who is heavily in touch with reality as you have seen. And in this particular case, I have said that the Constitution is the supreme law of the Republic. Law or conduct inconsistent with it is invalid and the obligations imposed by it must be fulfilled. And in any event, Papa Ute, it was a victim support empowerment service. This basically explains and highlights all the things that this particular document seeks to entail. <coughs> and it's a victim empowerment service in the South African Police Service leading to evidence or information before the National Assembly in relation to the case requested uh, registered on 2025 or May 29 at Kuma reference case number 150 slash of 5 of 2020 by 9004046 MC Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Volani Mangolele in which paragraph 18 on page 213 it says I am a father of Nyeko and Aluta Songelwa and the incumbent president Cyril Ramaphosa Speaker of Parliament Tandimudise Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng Democratic Alliance Leader John Steenhuisen Economic Freedom Fighters Leader Julius Malema President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Maya, Judge President Trope, Judge President Molambo, the Office of the Mayor and the Speaker of the City of Tswane, Deputy Judge President Ledwaba, the Company Secretary of the Judicial Service Commission, Selo Chilwane, 
Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans, Vuzimuzi Cyril Kaba, Minister of Justice, Ronald Lamola, Minister of Finance, Tito Mbowene, Minister of Defense, Nosifiwe Mapisa Ngakula, Minister of Police, Beki Kele, Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Dr. Ngosa Zanadlamini Zuma, Director General Tra- National Treasury of the of South Africa, Dondo Mahajane, National Director of Public Prosecuting Authority, Shamila Butoy, South African Broadcasting Corporation Group CEO, Madoda Makakwe, Mkakwe, <coughs> and the Accounting Officer and Secretary of Defense and Military Veterans, Dr. Sam Gulube, General Solishoke. Chief Executive Officer of the South African Human Rights Commission Advocate Tsidi Sotipanye, General Auditor General Tembegile, uh, I can see that Magwetu and Vice Admiral Kubu, Vice Admiral Samuel Shongwane, Rear Admiral Jemison, Rear Admiral Msana, Rear Admiral Mkonto, Rear Admiral Fore, Rear Admiral Nkomonde, Rear Admiral Junior Great Machimane, and Hans and Gogi, Manager uh, Facilities or Housing Captain Said, Fleet Career Manager Captain Nito, and Immediate Supervisor or Divisional Officer Captain Njalin Charlie and the Chief Officer Commanding of the Army Support Base in Pochifstrom, Lieutenant Colonel Peterson and Malenja Millicent Sankobe here in after referred to as the accused persons or syndicate are the few uh, out of approximately 60 million fellow South Africans who are standing between me and my children. All these persons are heads of state organs of state organs employed to uphold the constitution and the law and have betrayed such oath of office. They have committed torture, attempted to commit torture, or incited instigated, commanded, or procured persons to commit torture. It is painful in any event for any person to be without his or her children, and all your matters are not broadcasted on national television simply because such broadcast uh, does not support the immediate, the mandate of any political party but that of the country and its people in accordance with the constitution and the law. Sly Lingolisto Mangolele have said a child's best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning the child. (coughs) And these children are expected to be living in this environment. I'm expected to grow in this environment as a senior officer. And there is no right in the Bill of Rights that can be protected, respected, and fulfilled in this environment. I demand my fundamental human rights and and an end to my suffering. Nyiko Mangolele and Aluta Swangelwais, my children, shall not live in this environment or be expected to to inherit this legacy of 1913 Land Act. As I defend and protect the Republic of South Africa, Papa Ute. And in going back, my family, and going back to this, let us up all uphold, defend and respect the Constitution as the supreme law of the Republic and promote the unity of the nation and that which will advance the Republic of South Africa and its people to live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. I submit the term. Strive means to struggle, attempt, try, or go all out or endeavor. Now, why must we expect our children to, their children's children, 
and all other people to live and strive or attempt for freedom in South Africa, our land, as if we now not the meaning of the words we say to God in national prayer. People who are not following the law are being protected and paid a salary to continue to unlawfully and intentionally sustain a misrepresentation on the DOD personal system, misleading all to believe that I am convicted to imprisonment for a period not exceeding five years, while the reality is that I was never convicted by any competent civilian court to imprisonment without an option of a fine or a and a sentence involving discharge or dismissal was never imposed upon me under the code. My family, especially Nyiko Mangolele and Aluta Songelwa, whose best interests are of paramount importance in every matter concerning them, including this matter, are suffering. I know this to be true because I grew up without a father and wish not for my children to grow up without a father and feel the same pain I have felt. Celsi Propriety Limited owes me 80 million rands. The South African Human Rights Commission as well as the South African Broadcasting Corporation owes me 50 million rands each while the Minister of Defense owes me more than 15 billion and the state owes me 38 centillion. For each day that passes and my salary is not paid into my bank account, I bill the state 2 billion rand per day. That is why you see so much effort by the judiciary to cause everyone to believe that I was heard in terms I was in terms of section two one B of the Vexatious Proceedings Act heard or granted an opportunity of being heard on fourteen september twenty eighteen by the Honorable Davis J of the Western Cape Division. While the reality is that I was never heard or or granted an opportunity of being heard as obligated by the provisions of the applicable legislation. You shall henceforth, henceforth free me from all this suffering in the name of Jesus and pay all that is due to me. No amount of money can buy the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law in the Republic of South Africa. Signed by myself, Sylvester Volane Madala Mangolele, as the sixth president of the Republic of South Africa, Papa Uteng. I am the defender and protector of the Republic of South Africa. I know it to be true that I have been empowered by great men who have stood tall for unity, who have stood proud and said to all people, we are all free, black and white together. We are all equal. And without derogating from those particular terms, This reality is as you see it. Strengthen his confidence in the nobility of the human soul and sustain all our hopes for a closeless life for all. All this we owe both to ourselves and to the peoples of the world who are so well represented here today. Know the difference, a Labrador versus a Golden Retriever. Just like these, colds and allergies can be confusing. Speak to your phone. <laughs> Back me. Sometimes you must allow these people to do what they to do. To my compatriots. Mm. 
to my compatriots, I have no hesitation in saying that each one of us is as intimately attached to the soil of this beautiful country as are the famous Jacaranda trees of Pretoria and the mimosa trees of the Pushpa. Each time one of us touches the soil of this land, we feel a sense of personal renewal. The national mood changes as the seasons change. We are moved by a sense of joy and exhilaration when the grass turns green and the flowers bloom. That spiritual and physical oneness we all share with this common homeland explains that the depth of the pain we all carry in our hearts as we saw our country tear itself apart in terrible conflict. And as we saw it spend, outlawed, and isolated by the peoples of the world, precisely because it had become the universal base of the pernicious ideology and practice of racism and racial oppression. We, the people of South Africa, feel fulfilled that you know, humanity has taken us back into its bosom, that we, who were outlaws not so long ago, have today be given the rare privilege to be host to the nations of the world on our own soil. We thank all our distinguished international guests for having come to take possession, possession with the people of our country. What is, after all, a common victory for justice, for peace, for human dignity. We trust that you will continue to stand by us as we tackle the challenges of building peace, prosperity, non-sexism, non-racialism, and democracy. We deeply appreciate the role that the masses of our people and their political mass democratic religious, women, youth, business, traditional and other leaders have played to bring about this conclusion. Not least amongst them is my second deputy president, the Honorable F. W. T. Clark. We would also like to pay tribute to our security forces in all their ranks for the distinguished role they have played in securing our first democratic election and the transition to democracy from bloodthirsty forces which still refuse to see the light. And you must understand it to be true that I am the security force that must uphold these terms. We have fought hard to lose the war to corruption. We have fought hard as a nation to be in a position where we are today, equal in dignity. We cannot be in a position where we allow a few in power to delay our democracy any longer. It is correct that we must prevail and democracy must prevail. For the Bill of Rights is the cornerstone of democracy in our republic. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The that time is now. The healing of the wounds, it has come. And in the name of Jesus, let it be now. Pay my salary. Let me do the things that must be done. 
Let me be the people of this world who must lead all more than 60 million South Africans to freedom. Moment to preach. The cousins that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. We have at last achieved our political emancipation. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender, and other discrimination. We succeeded to take our last steps to freedom in conditions of relative peace. We commit ourselves to the construction of a complete, just, and lasting peace. We have triumphed in the effort to implant hope in the press of the millions of our people. We enter into a covenant that we shall build the society in which all South Africans, both black and white, will be able to walk tall without any fear in their hearts. Without any fear in their hearts. And I agree with this covenant. And the Bible says, do not fear. 365 times in the Bible it says, do not fear. When you equate those 365 times to our daily reality, is that each and every day of your day, you must not fear. You must live and enjoy universe. Uh, you enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. It's a covenant that was made by the founding speech of the rainbow nation. This is the father of our democracy. This is the father of our rainbow nation. Who are we to go against the father of our rainbow nation? Who are we to go against these terms? Assured of their inalienable right to human dignity, a rainbow nation at peace with itself and the world. As a token of his commitment to the renewal of our country, the new interim government of national unity will, as a matter of urgency, address the issue of amnesty for various categories of our people who are currently serving terms of imprisonment. We dedicate this day to all the heroes and heroines in this country and the rest of the world who sacrificed in many ways and surrendered their lives so that we could be free. Their dreams have become reality. Freedom is their reward. We are both humbled and elevated by the honor and privilege that you, the people of South Africa, have bestowed on us as the first president of a united, democratic, non-racial, and non-sexist South Africa to lead our country out of the valley of darkness. We understand it still that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. And I know it well that I cannot achieve success acting alone. That's why President Joe Biden, you are called to assist in this particular matter. We must therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation for nation building, for the birth of a new world. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Let there be work, bread, water, and salt for all. Let each know that for each, the body, the mind, and the soul have been freed to fulfill themselves. Never, never, and never again shall it be 
that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity. <laughs> and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world. The sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement. Let freedom reign. God bless Africa. I thank you. And let freedom reign. Let it indeed reign. Let freedom reign. Do not let suffering reign like Ramaphosa has allowed Sylvester Volane Mangolele and his family to suffer while people are laughing and then everyone thinks that, hey, this person is like, hey, he does not know his duty. It is correct that we need each other. It is correct that we must work together. And There's a 90% chance your phone is already infected we with have this. To be There's a new groundbreaking discovery that's a reversing planned on where we can do what must be done. And in doing what must be done, it's exactly this. We are working with the P5 plus one to engage Iran diplomatically and to seek a return to JCPOA. We're prepared to return to full compliance if Iran does the same. Similarly, we seek serious and sustained diplomacy to pursue the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. We seek concrete progress toward an available plan with tangible commitments that would increase stability on the peninsula and in the region, as well as improve the lives of the people in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. We must also remain vigilant to the threat of terror that terrorism poses to all our nations, whether emanating from distant regions of the world or in our own backyard. We know the bitter string of terrorism. The bitter sting of terrorism is, is real. We've almost all experienced it. Last month, we lost 13 American heroes and almost 200 innocent Afghan civilians in a heinous terrorist attack at the Kabul airport. Those who commit acts of terrorism against us will continue to find a determined enemy in the United States. The world today is not the world of 2001, though. And the United States is not the same country we were when we were attacked on 9-11 20 years ago. Today, we're better equipped to detect and prevent terrorist threats, and we are more resilient in our ability to repel them and to respond. We know how to build effective partnerships to dismantle terrorist networks by targeting their financing and support systems, countering their propaganda, preventing their travel, as well as disrupting imminent attacks. We'll meet terrorist threats that arise today and in the future with a full range of tools available to us, including working in cooperation with local partners so that we need not be so reliant on large-scale military deployments. One of the most important ways we can effectively enhance security and reduce violence is by seeking to improve the lives of the people all over the world. By seeking to improve the lives of the people all over the world. This is what you are requested to uphold, Mr. Joe Biden. Who see that their governments are not serving their needs. Because it is indeed true that my government has not been serving my needs. And in service and defense of my country and its people, in accordance with the Constitution and the law, I have a constitutional obligation to uphold, defend, and respect the Constitution as the supreme law, unlike what the incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa is doing.
everything that President Sir Ramaphosa has done in the name of Sylvester Wolane Mangolele has been opposite to all the aspirations of all our leaders, the Roosevelt of this world, the Nelson Mandela's of this world, and every other person uh, that is known to be a leader who has stood firm against human rights and oppression. Corruption fuels inequality, siphons off a nation's resources, spreads across borders, and generates human suffering. It is correct, as I have already said it to you. I am suffering as a result of corruption. President Joe Biden, come and arrest the people that are making me to suffer. Let us uphold the law. Let us uphold the meaning of the words we say and engage upon. I am suffering. I have suffered for far too long. And let that stop. There's nothing less than a national security threat in the 21st century. It is indeed a national security threat. And when we deal with it, we have to be honest. Because without being honest, we'll just only give, be making better and better lies. And the honesty of it is that the incumbent president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is my commander-in-chief, as before. And then he did not do what a commander-in-chief must do. It is true. Around the world, we're increasingly seeing citizens demonstrate their discontent, seeing the wealthy and well-connected grow richer and richer, taking payoffs and bribes, operating above the law, while the vast majority of the people struggle to find a job or put food on the table or to get their businesses off the ground or simply send their children to school. People have taken to the streets in every region to demand that their governments address people's basic needs, give everyone a fair shot to succeed and protect their God-given rights. And in that chorus of voices across languages and continents, we hear a common cry, a cry for dignity, simple dignity. Simple dignity. Simple dignity. And it is indeed a simple As leaders, it's our duty to answer that call. Dignity. Not to silence it. The United States is committing to use, committed to using our resources and our international platform to support these voices, listen to them, partner with them. Simple dignity. To find ways to respond that advance human dignity around the world. Simple dignity. For example, there's an enormous need for infrastructure in developing countries. But infrastructure that is low quality, or that feeds corruption, or exacerbates environmental degradation, may only end up contributing to greater challenges for countries over time. Done the right way, however, <clears throat> with transparent, sustainable investment in projects that respond to the country's needs and engage their local workers, to maintain high labor and environmental standards, infrastructure can be high labor. Infrastructure is what I want to do here as the sixth president of the Republic of South Africa. Infrastructure is what must be done to ensure that all people are equal. And that particular infrastructure, opposite to what many believe it, we send it back to sender. We send it to home, where charity begins at home. I will not die and leave Nico Mangolele to be digging another hole as a pit toilet. While I have the ability, the fortitude, and the know-how to arrange with partners 
in making sure that all things that are required to achieve equality, basic fundamental equality where each and every person has ablution facilities with running water in their home. It is a goal that I will achieve. It is a goal that we must all achieve. It is development. Be a strong foundation allows societies in low and middle income countries to grow and to prosper. That's the idea behind the Build Back Better world. And together with the private sector and our G7 partners, we aim to mobilize hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructure investment. We also will also continue to be the world's largest contributor to humanitarian assistance. So in terms of capital, we have that particular cost to look at. We have that particular resource to tap into as the Republic of South Africa going into a better life for all. This is not a simple task. This is not a task for people that are unwilling to change, people that want to oppress other people by classifying them as people bakoti plasing or rural areas people or people bakokasi or people bakotropong. All people are equal. And it is correct that the equality of people is guaranteed by the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law. I ask of you, President Joe Biden, to come and referee between me and President Cyril Ramaphosa before the Defense Force Service Commission. I will hear from them in due course following this video, which I will email its link to all your embassies and all other people that are affected by it. As it is correct that we are a rainbow nation, we are a nation that depends on sustainability, success, prosperity, freedom, peace, and equality. We shall act to achieve those. We shall live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. We shall uphold words to have meaning. We shall be true to our cause. We shall be true to our children. We shall be true to our nation. We shall be true to all those whom we lead. We will not expect people to look at us oppressing the likes of Mangolele or any other person who is supporting, who is reporting criminal activity, corruption and misconduct. We shall, as the United Nation of South Africa, do what must be done in order to be rid corruption, criminal activity and misconduct. All people in the universe, I ask you and I ask your support to support the roots of Africa. If you look at our geographical location and the map of the entire universe and figuratively look at Africa as a tree with roots, South Africa is those roots. We fix the roots and freedom will flourish throughout all the branches of South Africa in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. Freedom will flourish. Freedom must flourish. The word of God must be upheld. We must remember that it is correct that but he that doth truth connect to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought 
in God. Good people, I thank you for your attention and I call upon America to assist South Africa as a nation. Let us sound the call to come together and united we shall stand. Let us live and enjoy freedom in the universe, our home. Let it be true that God is well. God is with us. And with this, I say to you, Papa Ote, I thank you. <laughs>